everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I hope everyone's doing great out there. If you'll recall, about two videos back, I did a tutorial called Topaz Adjust AI One-Click Makeovers, and I showed you how the artificial intelligence works in there to give you really amazing results on your images. Uh, it was kind. Of, it was kind of a cool video, I thought, and I had a lot of good response from from my viewers out there, from you guys. I appreciate that, all your feedback and things. Um, but I didn't show you how all the controls work. So I thought I want to do a video and show you how all the controls work. So I have this image right here. It's a camera raw image right out of the camera. And then I was thinking, I wonder if you could use Topaz Adjust AI as a raw standalone editing piece of software. And I thought, hmm, I scratched my head and I thought, I bet you can. So I want to see if we can answer that question in today's video, along with showing you how all the controls work. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Before we start and try to answer the question, can Topaz Adjust AI be used as a standalone editor? I wanted to point a couple things out about this image. This is a RAW file. Now, I took the original RAW file and sent it into Topaz Denoise AI and did some noise reduction and sharpening to it. And then I exported it out of there as a DNG RAW file and sent it into Topaz Adjust AI. So now we can process it. So I wanted you to know that right up front. And I also wanted to point out that yes, you can edit raw files in Adjust AI. If you're wondering why your Adjust AI may not look like mine, it's probably because it's set to open up with presets. I prefer to open mine up with uh, my controls showing. So if you ever want to change that, all you need to do is come up to the Topaz Adjust AI menu up here. Now it may look a little different on a uh, Windows machine. I'm working with a Mac and just find your preferences easy stuff and then just come to where it says panel on startup change it from preset to control or if you like preset leave it on preset but anyway that's how you change it and then after you set it to to the place you'd like it to be click close and then the next time you open adjust ai it'll be just the way you like it let's take a look at the control interface okay so right up at the top we have the power of adjust ai the standard and the HDR style buttons right here. And of course we have an off button too. You don't have to use these buttons, but again, this is where the power comes in. I mean, you can leave this off and just use your adjustments to adjust your image. You don't have to use the uh, auto adjust AI if you don't want to. Just wanted to point that out. And also these uh, sections right here, these panels like brightness, color, and clarity, and so on, you can open these up. And you can open a bunch of them up or all of them up. I don't like to work that way, especially if you have like a laptop or a smaller monitor. It takes up a lot of real estate. So I like to collapse them and then just start with the one I want to work with first. I really like the way uh, Adjust AI is laid out here in the control panel over here, starting with the uh, auto adjust artificial intelligence buttons right here. And then we move down through the workflow, brightness, color, and clarity. It's a real natural way to work. So I like it. It's a top down workflow. So we'll start out here in the auto adjust section. My recommendation would be with this uh, standalone uh, editor in mind, let's not work with uh, HDR, but let's just work with standard. Because remember, we're trying to get a nice, very good basic edit here. Okay, so let's, we click standard. Here's the before and here's the after. So already we're off to a good start. Now remember, if you think that's a little too much, you can always take this strength and you can start to peel it back and just add as much as you want. And I think I will do that. I'll take it back to around an 83%. Here's the before and the after. Now, do you have to use the artificial intelligence buttons? No, you do not. And if you don't like the result you're getting, you could just shut it off and then start working with all these other controls in here. But I like the power of artificial intelligence. So let's start with the brightness uh, control panel. Let's open that up and here's all our controls in here. So do we need some more exposure or less exposure? What do we think? Well, we can start to move it to the right and lighten it up or we can move it to the left and darken it down. Hey, however you feel, move it that way. But I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of exposure here. Maybe, you know, somewhere, somewhere right around there. And then we have contrast here, so we can add contrast, or we can take contrast away. These are really aggressive controls, by the way. I'm going to give it some contrast. 
Not a whole lot because we have this clarity uh, panel right here and clarity, think contrast, but it breaks it down into micro, low, medium, and high areas of contrast. Really powerful. So I'm just going to say, go with maybe a little bit of contrast here. Don't go too crazy here. I, th I think that would be a mistake. And then if you need more highlights, you can move this to the right and increase your highlights a little bit. I think a little bit of highlights in there would look good. And then we can decide, do we want to make our shadows darker by moving this to the left or we want to make them lighter? And I think I want my shadows maybe to be a little bit lighter. And then we have a white and a black point. So if we need more white, we can bring this up to the right a little bit. And I think a little bit of white in there would look good. And then a black point. The only thing they don't have, and I think they'll add it probably, hopefully on a uh, future update, would be a histogram. They don't have that yet. It would be nice to have it, especially when you want to set a white and a black point. But we're professionals, right? We know how to set our white and black point. We don't need training wheels, but I just do it to taste anyway. So... I'm just going to leave the black point right where it is. So if I double click black, it'll go right back to zero. So we have our brightness section done so far. So we can go ahead and click brightness here and collapse that group. And now let's open up the color group and work with color. So here we have some really useful tools. We have temperature, tint, and saturation. So I may want to warm this up. I always like to warm my images up generally. I'm tending to go that way anyway. Or you could cool it down if you move it to the left. But I want to warm it up just a little bit. Not too much. Maybe right there. And then we have our tint. We can make our greens more green by moving this to the left. Or we can uh, add a little bit bit of magenta to offset those greens a little bit and I may do that just give myself a little bit of magenta so my greens don't get too strong I think that looks good and every now and then left click your uh, canvas here so you can see it before and after but already it's looking really good hmm and then we have saturation so we can uh, increase our saturation or decrease the saturation double click to get it back where it was I think I'm happy with the saturation where it is, so I'm just going to double click it. And now let's move on to clarity. And remember, I said clarity is like um, contrast, dealing with micro areas of contrast, low, medium, and high areas of contrast. Now, you got to be careful here, but these are very powerful sliders. Oh my gosh, look, I left my color group open. I'm going to go ahead and close that. When you see clarity in Topaz, think contrast. And I believe this is the same filter that's in Topaz Studio 2 called the Precision Contrast Filter, okay? Where you have micro, low, medium, and high areas of contrast. Now, if you move these sliders to the right, I'll start with low here. You're going to add contrast to the lower, to lower areas of contrast in the image. Double click that and medium to the medium areas of contrast. Okay, and high, large areas of contrast. See like up in here, which looks horrible. Let me double click this. And micro would be like very small areas like, you know, these thin veins on the leaf of this very ugly bug. So that would be the micro when I pull that. But on this particular image, my thought is I'm not going to add contrast. I'm going to remove contrast. And the only reason I'm doing that is for um, the reason of softening up this already soft background, which I love really soft bokeh. If you watch any of my videos, you'll know that. So what I want to do is take the micro. I'm going to start to move it to the left because if I move it to the left, I'm going to decrease contrast. You see that? So I'm going to start to move it to the left a little bit and get rid of a little bit of that contrast back in here. Not too much. I'm not going to go crazy. And you may be saying, well, you're going to get rid of all that contrast on this ugly bug, Dave. Maybe you want to hide that ugly bug. No, it's out there, stuck out there like a sore thumb. But these veins here, but it looks pretty cool. The boy in me, right? He likes bugs. Okay, so anyway, sorry, all you girls out there, if you don't like bugs. And some of you guys, too, don't like bugs. But I'm going to pull the low back. And again, I'm only looking at the background, okay? I'm just trying to soften it up a bit. I don't want to go too far and get my ugly bug out of focus but i'm going to be careful i'm going to take my medium and start to pull it back you know again i'm being careful i'm just looking for that softer background that's all i'm trying to do here and the same with the high i'm going to start to pull it back and you know if i pulled it to the right i would bring that you know see how here it gets really dark and that looks horrible right but you know i could just add a little bit if i wanted in there but i don't want that again i want to soften it so i'm going to pull that back somewhat too 
So right around there, I think looks good. Now I'm going to bring detail back into my insect here with the next really great uh, uh, section called detail. So let me go ahead and collapse clarity by clicking on it. And now let's open up detail. And now we're going to zoom in on our image and kind of look at this insect. So we have a couple different ways we can zoom in. You can click right here where it says 100%. You'll zoom in 100%. Or you could take the slider right here and you could start to drag it to the right and zoom in as much as you want. I'm going to zoom in pretty good here so we can see all the nice uh, detail on this bug. See right in here? Kind of cool. I know I called him an insect. Now I'm calling him a bug. Oh well. Forgive me for that. Anyway, so we're zoomed in and now we can start with the small detail. So let's take our small detail and start to move it up. And this is very similar to the uh, precision detail filter inside of Topaz Studio 2, if not one in the same, and I think it is. The only difference here, they don't give us the shadow and the highlight detail, but they give us the overall detail. So let's look at the veins and things and the wings and on the uh, the veins in this uh, piece of grass or whatever it is, leaf. Um, so we'll start to move it to the right and see how we can pop that detail. Look at that detail. Beautiful detail. Let me zoom in even further so you can really see it. Can you see all that detail in there? So let's pull this up a little bit more. Now I recommend with the small detail, zoom in a good bit so you can really see what you're doing to your image. And I'm thinking right around there. And you also have a boost slider if you feel you need to boost that up, give it a little extra, but I don't mess with that too much. I mainly just use these main sliders here. Sometimes I'll fine tune with the boost sliders. And let's do our medium detail. But like I said, I'm going to go and zoom back out. So I'm going to click fit to screen, zoom back out. And look at that detail that's popped in there. And again, every now and then left click your canvas. There's a before and after. Mm, it's looking really good. So now let's take our medium detail and start to drag it to the right and watch the image. Okay, can you see that? Bringing in some of that me medium detail. I don't want to go too crazy here. Because I have a lot of sharpness in this image. Sharpness where it counts. I realize I have a lot of out of focus areas. But that's part of the charm of this image. I like a really soft depth of field when I'm doing flowers or insects and things like this. But I have certain parts of the wing in, in uh, focus here. This is not the greatest picture in the world. But I'm just using it as an example today. So anyway. So let's get that medium detail just where we want it. I'm thinking maybe right about there. And now let's play with the large detail. Don't want to go too crazy with a large detail. Maybe just a tiny little bit. Again, here's the before and here's the after. And I almost forgot to mention you do have an overall sharpening slider right here. You can add a little extra sharpness to your image if you feel you need it. So you can sharpen up the entire image a little bit. I think it looks good. I don't think I need anything there. And uh, if you get any artifacts from the... Uh, Detail adjustments. If you move this to the right, you can get rid of some artifacts. And uh, let's go ahead and collapse this detail panel. And then we're left with two other panels, split tone. And that's a typical split toning uh, filter that you find in just about anybody's software out there. And it's good for uh, stylizing your images. So you could uh, tint your highlights and tint your shadows or just tint your shadows and not your highlights or just your highlights and not your shadows. But this image doesn't need it, so I'm not going to play with that one. And then lastly, we have this grain panel right here. If you feel you need to add some film grain to your image, feel free to use this right here. I don't really need it because, you know what, I got rid of all that noise with Topaz Denoise, so I don't think I'd want to add any more back. But grain's good for black and white images if you want that authentic black and white look that you get from films. So that's one usage for that. And they give you grain types gray, which would be for black and white images and color for color images. And then you also have a strength and a size of grain slider. So if you can add grain if you want to, but I'm not going to go into those now. But mainly you're going to be using the uh, auto adjust the eye buttons. Brightness, color, clarity, and detail. Hold the presses. There's one more thing I forgot to tell you, and it's super important. At the very bottom right here, on the right-hand side of the interface, opacity. This is really great because you can take this opacity slider, and it's going to equally pull down every adjustment, including the auto adjust AI adjustments evenly. As you start to move it to the left, you can roll all those adjustments off simultaneously together. And, you know, 
like I always show you, pull that slider off and then start to drag it up slowly and stop at a point where you say, yeah, because we always tend to overdo our edits, at least I do. And a lot of times I'm always pulling back on my opacity sliders. So actually, I think like maybe right around there, 75, here's the before and here's the after. When you're through editing, all you need to do is come down to the right hand corner of the interface on the bottom here. Click save as you're greeted with this dialog box. And all you need to do is choose a file format. So you can choose uh, JPEG, TIFF, or PNG, DNG, whatever you want. You can save it out as a raw file, which I think is pretty cool. Right now it's set as a TIFF. I'm not going to save it, but let's leave this on TIFF. You can go ahead and rename it here if you want to. You can browse and tell it where you want it to save on your computer. Uh, if you're in TIFF here, you can change your compression to none or zip or keep it on LZW. These are just different compression ratios. I generally use none there. Uh, bit depth. I always like to say use the highest bit depth. You'll get better edits. If you want to do some further edi editing on this image, definitely use 16-bit. It makes sense. And always, in my opinion, use the highest color profile. In this case, Pro Photo RGB would be the one to use. Okay? Unless you need a different format for whatever reason. And then once you're happy, just click Save and you're done. I'm just going to click Cancel for now. And there it is. Can we use Topaz Adjust AI as a standalone application? I think we can. What do you think? Uh, please leave comments and questions in the comment section below. Uh, I'd like to hear from you. That would be awesome. And um, this is really cool. If you didn't want to get into a whole bunch of heavy duty editing, you know, if you're just satisfied with just getting a nice edit off your image, you didn't want to spend hours and hours in editing like I enjoy doing. I really do. So, but if you don't want to get in, get that involved, I think this piece of software can work for you. Now you can work in the raw format, which is really nice. Uh, and also we save this out or I save this out as a DNG, meaning now I can go ahead and uh, run it into Photoshop, Topaz Studio 2, Luminar, Affinity Photo, whatever, and I can do some heavy-duty editing on it, like further editing, because it's in the raw format and it uh, has a lot higher resolution. It's not losing all that information, so that's really cool. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon, and then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.